you issue is waiting to. for you November 8th are questions 6 and 7. Essentially, the legislature is asking you to decide whether to set a graduated income tax that establishes higher tax rates for higher incomes or keep the current flat tax system. On News 4 News Conference this morning, we examine the pros and cons of the grad tax with Barbara Anderson of Citizens for Limited Taxation and Jim Brody of the Tax Equity Alliance. Welcome. The two of you on the same couch, I'm sure your supporters are going to say, what's going on here? Because <laughs> right. the, you made us do it, John. Yeah, it's against our will. State the, the, the need for a graduated income. A change in the Constitution of graduated income tax. Why do you think it's necessary? Taxes it's, have been taboo in, during the Weld administration. We're not raising taxes. According to the Weld administration's own analysis, this thing is revenue neutral, meaning raises roughly as much income tax revenue as the current system does. The problem is the current system, John, is fundamentally unfair. It taxes people making $30,000 a year at the same rate as millionaires. And when you look at the total tax system, low-income people paying twice as much of their income to all state and local taxes as millionaires, middle-income people one and a half times as much. So it's not only has a goal to make the tax system fair, but in making it fair, try to get rid of some of the cynicism and bad feeling that everybody feels towards a government that makes big promises but never delivers. In this case, the people can deliver themselves. So to answer your question, the reason they need it is right now, when the public employee union leadership and the welfare lobbyists want more money, they have to talk the legislature into raising the tax rate on all of us because our Constitution requires that we all have the same income tax rate. With the graduated income tax, they can pick us off one bracket at a time. They can divide and conquer the taxpayers. They can offend only a few of the constituents of the politicians in any given election cycle, and therefore they can control our tax rates and raise taxes on us for the rest Barbara, of our lives. if that's the case, then why do the 35 states that already have a graduated income tax, why have they raised revenue no more quickly than the flat tax states, which you say are the great protection of the taxpayer? All those other poor states don't have constitutional protection. So the taxpayers in those states are stuck with a graduated income tax. The Constitution doesn't protect them from it. In those states, they were raising taxes so much during the 80s that they finally hit that fiscal wall, and even their legislators had to realize that they couldn't raise taxes anymore without hurting their economy. Let's break these two questions apart. Question six seeks to change the con a yes right. vote changes the right. constitution, which now says everybody's taxed at a flat rate, flat and, you can't, and you have to use the same rate up or down if you change the tax Correct. rate. Correct. The way the current system works, it mandates a flat tax. The new system, if question six is approved, will mandate a graduated tax. The language says higher income people shall, not may, shall pay at a then, higher rate than lower income And people. then seven sets the new tax rate, which, sets out, which goes up above 9% for those making over $100,000. Yeah, but over $150,000. But as again, a, as a couple. To quote well, which I rarely do, as you well know, uh -huh. the governor's department of revenue did an analysis. Here's the conclusion you reached. 92% of the people will pay less. 8% will pay more. The critical 8% is that means that not one cop will be taken off the beat, nor one teacher out of that, the class. Let me just finish the thought, if I may, Barbara. Right. The, the, the second thing, John, another threshold, 102000 less for a family, 60000 less for an individual, they will pay less. So the reality is we have a plan that cuts taxes for 92% of the people, protects services for 100% of them, and that's why Barbara's got to fish up a right. red why, herring a week to try to discredit would, well, You want to talk about that? The, why would an organization called Citizens for Limited Taxation that has never seen a tax cut that it didn't love be opposed to this? Because we know it isn't real. If you want to quote Bill Weld, Bill Weld said none of what he just said. Bill Weld said... Somehow, I don't think the people in Massachusetts are going to let the Massachusetts legislature set their tax rates. Barbara, it's all in this report. And every word is in this report that I just mentioned, issued by Wells. you know what Department else is in that revenue. report? It says that they will pick us off one tax bracket at a time. It says that there will be about a $100 million natural tax increase each year with the graduate income tax. And it also warns about the possibility of local option taxes. If question six passes, we'll now be able to have a Boston commuter tax. You'll be able to have city taxes where you work, town taxes where you live, an MWRA income tax. Any governmental entity will be able to raise an income tax on top of our state and federal income tax. question six opens the door that's to that. Right. Well, no, no that's what Barbara says. Yeah. No, as I said before, you can't convince voters to vote against a tax break that's revenue neutral except by fishing up these phony issues. Let's focus on this question of, uh, of uh, revenue neutrality. It means, and I think this is what goals, Barbara, is one, they're not going to have to cut services. And as to why Citizens for Limited Taxation, John, is opposing this, they've raised two million bucks. Virtually every single penny is from major corporations, even though it won't affect the corporate taxes. Because the CEOs of these corporations, put it pure and simple, but what's don't want to pay more me? and they're hiding behind I don't people care like about never been for a, a tax cut before, though. That's absolutely untrue. We, so we opposed and were given credit in the Boston Globe in 1990 
for killing a two cent proposed increase in the sales tax because we thought it was fundamentally unfair. And in 1991, wait, wait, wait. he was on the front steps of the State House, John, you saw him there, wanting that 20% increase in the sales tax along with an increase in the income tax the and the an expansion of the sales tax. The difference, tax. Is, the difference tax. is we have opposed, to be perfectly right, candid, John, we have opposed most of the tax cuts that Barbara has supported, including some in this proposal, major All difference. All of them in this proposal. In Barbara's world and in Wells' world, they're funded by cuts in public services. In this proposal, they're funded by asking the wealthiest 8% to pay more no, that so is the not public true. services will not suffer. We That's filed. What we difference. did is we filed this year, John, the exact same tax cuts that he has in question seven, and we took them to the legislature, and there was a public hearing, and we testified in favor of tax cuts for senior citizens, low-income taxpayers, working mothers, and water and sewer ratepayers. And Jim's organization showed up and testified against those very same tax cuts they are now trying to sell as the bait in the trap to get people to vote to change Barbara the Constitution. Barbara Sr.'s groups also testified against them because they knew they were going to be paid for by cuts in the services but they those were. same people but they, depend upon. This is the fifth time be... this thing has been on the ballot <laughs> since 1962. You got it. Four other times it's gone down by tremendous numbers. How does it keep coming back like that? A mere 73 to 27 the last time, Yeah, John. that's all. This is 46 points. The major difference is all four times all that was on the ballot was a constitutional change. This time, this companion question seven spells out for every voter as they enter the polling booth on November 8th Exactly how that right, sounds. That's the bait in the trap. Okay, I have to break in here. We'll come back in the second segment and talk about who it affects and how. Fair enough. If you're looking for the two distinct sides and uh, views on the graduated income tax, you're getting it this morning on News 4 News Conference. When we come back this morning, more on our top. To change the way they are taxed, it is a divisive and confusing issue. This morning on News 4 News Conference, we try to explain the proposed graduated income tax with two people who claim to know it best, Barbara Anderson of Citizens for Limited Taxation and Jim Brody of the Tax Equity Alliance. <laughs> Welcome back. We're still on the same issue as you have been. This proposal would also affect small businesses in Massachusetts. Indeed. Economists say that's the backbone of any recovery. Wouldn't you drive them out of state if they if they weren't competitive? No. Well, first of all, we agree that small business is the key. We released a study the other day, John. And first of all, small business people mostly pay taxes on their profits from their business as personal income, not as corporate taxes. So this would affect them. We released a study that said that 82% of small business owners in the state will pay less under question seven. The response from the other side, or the criticism, was that, quote, only 75% will pay less. So either way you cut it. Three out of four or four out of five small business that owners will pay less. Let me just I finish the sentence. I, well, if I I'm can. the opposition, and I'll tell you what the response I'll tell you what was. Said, well, Do I get a chance to talk? Well, let me just finish the thought. Me. Second thing is, Wells says this will transfer $600 million into the pockets of the middle class. They will have more money to spend in the small businesses whose owners are paying less in taxes. This from the organization that took the money out of the middle class pockets in the first place. The fact is, small businesses who pay through their personal income taxes can get up to a 65% rate increase. Or a 100% cut, Barbara. If they're doing well this year, if they're the ones who are creating jobs, they're the ones who are actually making a profit. They're the ones who are going to get hit and penalized for it. And that's why Paul Songus has said that this is the last thunderbolt of anti-business ideology, that this is, and this is the last thing the state needs. You know, this notion that the only small business people creating jobs are the wealthy ones is completely ludicrous and also condescending. Nobody said there are that. Many, there are many small businesses that are just struggling to make ends meet that are creating the very same jobs John's talking about. If they're in the bottom 82%, they're going to pay less. Their customers are going to have more. If they're the wealthiest small business owners, frankly, Barbara, they can afford to pay a little more. But, but one of the things that concerns a lot of Let's people... Let's punish them for creating those jobs. Once you open the door for the legislature in different levels of different tax rates, uh, the power to tax is the power to destroy, and they know how to do that pretty well. John, I sat in a room like this with you a couple of years ago when Barbara had a massive tax rollback on the ballot in 1990. What she was saying is no state has raised taxes more steeply or more often than Massachusetts. That was under the flat tax that now four years later, conveniently, Barbara is saying is the last great protection of the voters. The reality is the system is irrelevant. What's relevant is who you send to Beacon Hill, the political environment they're working in, and how well the people are willing to protect what they do. 250,000 people signed petitions to put this on the ballot. If it passes, they're going to darn well make sure it's protected. That is simply not true. I mean, the people also wanted the money to go back in local aid to the cities and towns, and they passed that. They didn't, didn't fund it, Barbara. Difference. They didn't fund it. That's Look, the difference. We're we... being honest about funding. Oh, please. What you're not, what you're not being honest about is you're the organization that's being against all the tax cuts that you are now saying that you exactly, want. Exactly, because you're they're the funded by cuts in public services. No, they we aren't. Believe they're in. funded. This year, the state revenues are going up $700 million. We wanted to give tax cuts to senior citizens and low-income people by simply taking half of that amount and starting to phase out some of the tax rates on them. Jim's organization showed up, and Jim said that this was simply throwing money away by giving tax breaks to senior exactly citizens. Right and low-income people. And now he stands up here and says that he cares about them and wants to cut their taxes. What he wants to do is use that bait 
in the trap to get people to change the Constitution so they can then do, as you, you know, said, John, 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 the federal government, virtually every Western nation, including the two most pro-business governments in the world, Japan and Germany, already have a graduated income tax. This moves us into the mainstream, not to some radical position where other places aren't. The federal government has a $4.5 trillion deficit. We're really not going Ronald to emulate... Because Ronald Reagan cut taxes oh, on the wealthy. We're not That's going exactly to, why. We're not going to emulate the federal government. And those other states that have graduated income taxes, they're rich start at $21,000. That's where they start categorizing people as rich. Barbara, General Utah is the death penalty. We're not doing the death right. penalty. This is the rate structure we, in mass. We have a short time left. I know your both organizations are going to start buying commercial time on television to tell the story. I'm going to give you some free time right now. You've got about 30 seconds to tell me why people should vote yes on, on question six and seven. Two very important reasons. One, they've been promised tax relief for ages by politicians. It's rarely delivered. Here's an opportunity for the voters themselves to make this happen. Cut taxes for 92% of the people while protecting services for 100% of the people. Secondly, this matters more to me than virtually anything. If this happens and the people themselves make it happen, I believe that this horrible relationship between the governed and those who govern begins to improve because people see that good things can actually happen what through the What people are going system. to see is they're yeah. going to see the taxes go up every year because the legislature will be able to pick us off one bracket at a time. And they're going to see a Boston City commuter tax and local option taxes where they live and work because the, the Constitution will no longer protect us from that. Barbara, with, your nose is growing. And they're going, oh, this. give me a break. The people are going to believe you. You're the person who always wants to increase people's taxes, and now you're using the bait of some tax cuts in a trap to make voters do what they never did in the past, have refused to do four times, and will refuse to do again easily if they weren't baiting that trap with phony tax cuts that they have never supported before now. And another thing that hits me is the, the Senate race has taken away from a lot of issues, and this hasn't been really... Uh, out and around. Jim, if people want to find out from your organization more about questions six and seven, how do they get a hold of one 833 team and they don't even have to agree with us, they can scream at us. And Barbara, are. if they're against it? 617-248-0022. Call us and help us get the bait out of the trap. Good morning, Barbara Anderson. Thank you thank for you. joining us and Thanks thank you for so. sitting on the same couch. <laughs> I didn't like it. I'm very comfortable here. And now,